Dude, getting dressed to go skating was just as much of getting dressed to like for anyone else if they're getting dressed to go out for a special occasion. It was very, very like much thought of, very much considered. It's like, hey, you gotta wear this, gotta be like this. You know, to an extent, like a lot of it was like that. I was completely oblivious to that aspect of your skating. Besides the shirt on the head, I think I was oblivious to the rest of the fashion style. Unless that was part of the fashion. <laughs> Was that was that like a, a a conscious decision like that like part of the the fashion to match your skating the shirt on the head? Um, that was dude. Or the that half was shirt, like, the half shirt on. Yeah, that was dude. That was literally an, a a social experiment in hindsight. It was like I remember like consciously saying to myself, "I'm gonna do something as ridiculous as wear two different color skates, and I just want to see." if kids start picking up on it and then like sure as hell you know i'm at the skate park and there's kids wearing two different color skates mm. you know so like literally in hindsight i didn't call it a social experiment at the time but it really it was um it was literally that's literally why all that was done it was just it was just to be outlandish just because it was just just for fun it was just just being bored with the same old things so, yeah, let's get gotta do something new and that's where that's where all that came from just fuck it you know yeah. why because skating is fun Skating is yeah. supposed to be fun. Yeah. All the best. Yeah. I'm sure as you guys can attest to all the best things from skating, it's like they, they come from having fun. It's like all, like a lot of like the tricks that I ended up doing for years, like came from like us skating together, experimenting with, with an obstacle or like a concept that you could do only on that obstacle. To, and then that develops into a trick and then you refine that trick. And then suddenly you're doing some shit you own bottle. Mm -hmm. you know, it's all about having fun with your friends and then kind of thinking outside the box, literally playing with your kids out, play on the playground, think of some weird shit to do. And then you say, oh, that could be kind of cool. And then you refine it, you know, you kind of get more comfortable doing that and you put your stamp and you, know, you instill a little bit of confidence in that maneuver and then suddenly you got something new. For sure. That was, that's, per that, that's the formula. That is the that, formula. That's what's always worked for me. It's just having fun. This, okay. this this kind of segues into the second part of what I wanted to ask you before when we were talking about um, Dennis Lopez because you were talking about his um, like the, the delivery of his tricks and you've yeah. said in the past that delivery of a trick is the most important aspect of skating. 100%. Please please elaborate educate please. Yeah because I mean you could you could okay so let's, let's <laughs> you could do the craziest gnarliest switch up on some crazy down rail. And you could look like shit doing it. Like maybe you did, you know, alley negative, whatever, to 360 negative, what, some, something stupid hard, right? But it's going to look like shit to the outside eye. This has always been my philosophy and my approach to skating. So you got to do something that looks good to, to someone who doesn't skate. So if you can make it look good to someone who doesn't skate, then at least you're kind of growing your audience. And you're, you have your skating then has more mass appeal than in my, uh, from my perspective, at least, so it'll, it'll look good from an outside eye, and then it'll also look good from from your niche, from people who are within your community. So, you know, then you're, you're, I don't know it's kind of a net positive there in my book, um, and that's all in delivery. It's like you could just do a fucking cool steezy front side or back side down your handrail, or you could do some convoluted, stupid, ugly switch up, and the fast slide or back slide back side's gonna look a hundred times better. It'll, it'll be easier to do and, and more fun. In my opinion, in my opinion, and uh, and that kind of like, it's, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, fucking Dennis did a fakey stair ride, looked like he didn't give a fuck, and that that was like one of the best things in that whole section. Yeah. <laughs> no, right? it's, it's yeah, no, totally. Right. It's cool. Like all in the attitude, all yeah. in his attitude, yeah. mm -hmm. bomb as fuck. Now delivery is is so important. Like the yeah. approach, the landing, and. Yeah, it's something like, yeah, you, you definitely talked about for a long time. And I think there was like a lot coming into like how you would approach tricks too, like and come off yeah. tricks. There was like a lot to it. And that's cool. Like the, to have that perspective it makes sense now for to like attract people outside of skating to like make them understand it and what's possible, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you, like I think going back to well, your comment right now about everything before and after the trick, you have to think like, where are you spending the most time on your skates? It's on the ground. So why are you putting the least amount of time into that? It's like 50% of what's being filled, if not more, is you skating up to it. And you've got, you know, two seconds of your grind or you know, longer if you're doing something longer or whatever. 
and then the, and then your exit. It's like those are all cute. Like you're you're overlooking like the like the two biggest parts. And so yeah, that's where that started. It was just if if we're spending most of our time on the ground, then why not focus on 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 that part of it? You know, it seems pretty important. Mm-hmm. No, I, I really love that philosophy too because I've never even like like looked at it that way. Like, where are you spending the majority of your time on the ground? Yeah, and I never thought about that. I remember either. even like in the past, like I would be very trick focused, yeah. and like I, I like now that I'm seeing things differently from years of skating, like I could see people on the same way. Like they'll do a trick and they and they come off and they just want to like turn around. <laughs> like they'll, they'll just want like the trick to be over once like the grind is over, but yeah. there's still like that whole other space that over, you yo. can like make that you can make look good, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, you threw, they threw the, the whole canvas away. They fucking threw some paint out, like, and then they threw the canvas. Like, uh-huh. Dude, you didn't, you didn't even start, you didn't finish your painting. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah true. You, you're one of the few skaters. Finish your you, painting. You, you're one of the few skaters that would actually utilize the space between lines, between your tricks and lines. That's the whole point. You, you know what I mean? Like, I can't, yeah. off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone else used to do that. You're always swiveling around doing some fancy footwork, whatever, just making use of all the space in that line, not just getting from one ledge to the next, you know? Yeah, you know, he's killing that is, is Ledoux. Yes, he's absolutely. So, dude, he's one of my favorite skaters to watch. Mm-hmm. He's, he's every, he like, yeah, he encapsulates, I think, that philosophy 100%. Mm-hmm. That, that goes to the parkour shit, his background. And yeah. even even the, the Jimmy the Giant episode, the last episode we had, he's a parkour guy. He mentioned something similar, too, about that, too, okay. like utilizing all that and mixing it together. And, um, yeah, it, it's it's absolutely true. Matt Ledoux, he's like a wizard. Like he flows like water on those on the skates, yeah. you know? So good. Yeah, there's a lot, like, even, like, um, you pull a lot of inspiration, like, from the slalom guys. Like, those guys got crazy, crazy footwork, you know? Like, I remember, like, one of the first times I went to Korea – for a USD tour, it was one of the first times I saw slalom skating in person. And I was like, dude, I, I thought I could slow. These guys are fucking, <laughs> these guys are crazy, dude. And like seeing some of that shit, you know, like those, that's all they do is skate on the ground. So yeah, so for everyone who's only been skating a little amount of time, focus on your groundwork. 